All right, so for today's project, we built this. <laughs> um, as you can see, I've got pretty much the drive assembly, the drive belt side, completely covered up um, from the front. Uh, this is like a 16 gauge, I think 16 gauge steel. Uh, it's the same type of steel that I use for my truck that I've been rebuilding. Uh, that's for another day. <laughs> um, so anyway, and I had just weld on some little tabs. I still got to finish, finish welding them out, but I welded on some tabs here. goes all the way through. Um, I had to cut a little groove, obviously, so that the belt, I mean the shaft to come through there and clears no problem. And to make sure those, uh, see those uh, nuts right there, got to make sure they clear this. I'm pretty confident it shouldn't be causing me any problems there. Uh, so as you can see, I'm the only bend I made was right here because uh, I don't have a metal brake. So I just used uh, my metal table, piece of angle iron on there, braced it down and then hammered it down. So this is the only bend. The rest of these are all welded in and then just kind of grinded. Uh, show you how I made all this. I use cardboard as my templates. So just started out by cutting out, you know, how far I needed dimension wise. And then just started cutting out little pieces. And then as you can see, I had them all taped on. Um, good thing with cardboard, it's very rigid, so it's able to kind of hold itself up. Uh, the bad thing you need to make sure that you don't forget is that this stuff is a, almost a, basically a quarter inch thick. So when you're taking your measurements, you know, like I got 15 inches across, well then I ended up taping this on the outside of one of them. And then when I actually went to put this on after I cut it out of metal, I ended up having to come back and shave this off because this was too far over this way. Same thing here. So I hadn't accounted for the extra thickness uh, on there. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, tape it all together, put it on there, make sure it fits. And then once it's done, you just cut the tape, lay it down, and cut it out. All right, so we are working on... Um, the guards, you know, I showed you that we finished that one over there. So now we're trying to figure out how to build these um, around the actual saw uh, cutting uh, sheaves. Uh, what I've determined is that I can weld onto this piece right here, and if I flush the outside of a, a structure to this, I'm going to be quarter inch off of this, uh, which means I can put the metal on here and go straight across, and it won't interfere with this at all. So what I've created is a couple of these uh, little triangles out of one inch tubing. And what's gonna happen is, I have to take the sheave off, obviously. Uh, let me back off here. So what's gonna happen is, these are gonna go and get welded right onto that back here. So, come over here and show you. Kinda just set that in there. <laughs> so basically, it'll get welded right onto here. Obviously, it's only gonna be about an inch and a half or so um, sticking out because I want the top of the metal to come across actually above it and so uh, as you can tell um, it just barely this one just barely makes it past the end of this and what I had to do was I had to make sure that I pulled this all the way out uh, so that I had plenty of room so that this adjustment side had plenty of room to go back and forth uh, when I first started it I had it in the center and I was like uh oh <laughs> so um, I will center that on here. Obviously, I have to take the sheave off, and then I'll center it on there, and then weld it back on, um, so that that fits on there just well, just fine. And then what I'll probably do is I will probably weld some nuts in uh, in the corners here, and then up in here, and then actually just screw the metal. Uh, but the metal is going to be rounded, obviously, about two inches all the way around this. Uh, that way gives a nice little shape. I was, it's going to be a little more challenging putting a cover on it, but, and then obviously the other one I've got already sitting kind of up there. I've taken everything out, everything off. This one's going to be a little more challenging. Um, but, uh, you'll see that once I put the, once I weld this on there, I can still reach both of those. Um, what I'll end up doing is probably just cutting some holes in the plate that's over here that gives me access to those screws. But, if I'm having to access 
the drive belt, I'm gonna have to take all of this off anyway. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I pulled off the both the sh drive sheaves uh, and I've got these mounted on here. Uh, still gotta kind of clean them up, but again, just tack, tack welded them on there and see if I can show you, you know, it's got this little bit of a quarter inch gap there. So the metal is gonna run right across here and it should clear all the way up, no problem. All right, so here's my cardboard template that I made. Um, not quite level like I like it, but anyway. So uh, I've got a two inch gap all the way around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and probably put in, I would imagine at least four inches um, in here to make sure I got plenty of room. I think probably four inches, probably be enough. And then uh, all around this thing here. Uh, good thing is uh, this template is good for both sides. So it gives me that little slot you see there. Had to do it on this side because of the shaft that's, I mean the pulleys back here on the shaft, so I can't just push it through. So good thing was because I had to put that in there, that slot works for this to be adjustable on that side. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this out of metal and get these done. Uh, the only thing I think I need to look at is on this one because it's cutting this direction. I'm probably not going to come around but to maybe down here to this point and I'll probably leave the bottom of this completely open. That way the sawdust doesn't start building up in here, has somewhere to fall. Uh, and then any of it that gets in here should hopefully fall back down if I stop somewhat right in there. Uh, obviously on the other side we'll go all the way around because there's no reason not to protect it all the way. And I'm going to be cutting or I'm going to be pushing the cutter uh, or the rig on that side so I want to make sure I got plenty of protection on my side. Alright so I know I don't <laughs> I haven't showed a lot of the process of making some of this stuff and it's just because I get started and I don't pay attention anymore but anyway so you see I've got this thing clamped down uh, I've cut a four inch strip here and then what I'm doing is I'm using my magnets to hold this down because it wants to kind of pick up a little bit and then obviously keep this together so you can kind of see how it's pushing back and forth against each other to make sure that this is as close to the bottom nice and square as I can get it. So I'm just tacking it right now all the way around. So I'm over to here and then this is the drive side so like I said I'm going to cut this one short. The other side will probably come all the way across. Alright so there's the first back one or the back the first one done. Uh, as you can see I kind of Finished tacking it in on the inside there uh, fairly close together and then what I did was I moved around and then I completely seal welded the outside all the way around and then uh, flapper welded smooth give myself a decent little finish uh, very happy with it uh, <laughs> go ahead and make another one of these but then uh, I'm not looking forward to the next step after that and that's to make the covers because um, obviously it has to wrap around the outside of this and I don't have a way of creating this curve that bends over. I mean the face of it's obviously fine but I'm gonna have to bend it over so I'm not sure just yet how I'm gonna do that. Uh, thinking about it the easiest way may be to make another one of these that's just flat and then clip them together and then just put a piece of strip metal maybe a half inch or three quarter inch wide or hell even maybe an inch wide put it on there where it overlaps all the way to where the face of the two are flush together and then put this little strip on top of it and then weld it to this side over here um, so I'd have to maybe make it like an inch or half inch tall I don't know. We'll see. I may do that. It may just be, actually, I may just make it flat. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it flat. It'll be a hair bigger, so it'll be a little bit taller than this. And then I'm just going to weld on a flat piece of metal, kind of like I did this. So I think I'll make another one of these, except this time it'll only be about maybe an inch across. That'll be the easiest thing. 
and make it just a hair wider so that it goes across and then it'll just slip right on and then I can use some sheet metal screws and screw it together. That's going to be the easiest way for me since I don't have any way of shrinking and bending metal like that. All right, so I got both sides done. I'm showing you just one side right now. Uh, as you can see, I did go with the method of just a little one inch lip welded on. Um, it fit pretty well, as you can see, it's not perfect. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap down here. I think I can probably suck up. Uh, it just probably just needs to be massaged a little bit, but um, it went on pretty well. Uh, I made both sides the same way. So, very happy with it. Um, pop it off here and let you see. So just, I welded a little bit on the inside and then seal welded on the outside just like I did the other one. So, all right, so very excited today. You can see we got our saw blades on uh, for our first test fit. I also have the guards uh, mounted on the back. And then I've got the faces done. Uh, already so all those are ready to screw back on so what I came into though is having to put a guard across this top right here uh, I don't have enough of the 16 gauge anymore and so uh, such is my way I had to find a way to protect myself and that's where this six inch C perlin comes in um, <laughs> so what I'm thinking about doing is taking it and welding it Right there, like that. Uh, you'll see how it kind of sits underneath it there. Um, I think that's gonna work just fine. All right, the guards are complete. Uh, that worked out much better than I anticipated. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got that six inch on here. You can see that thing's pretty dang sturdy, ain't going anywhere. So that saved me the trouble of having a build structure and then attach metal to it, all one in pieces together. So, one thing that I will say that I also forgot about, you can see once I put the blade on here, there is not a lot of room between, sorry, between here and here. So what I'm going to end up doing is when I take this blade off, I'm going to end up straightening this out all the way down, which is not going to be easy. <laughs> but I'm going to straighten this out so it's pointing down. Um, that'll give me a little bit more uh, guard pointing down, but it'll get it away from this blade. As you can see, that turned out pretty well uh, from what I anticipated. Um, kind of hard to, there you go. So just weld it on. Uh, again, forgive my welds, but I gotta clean this up. So just weld the little nuts on there and then screwed them in. So uh, pretty happy with it.